All right, today I'm hoping to do a Gemini Agena docking recording. Okay, so we wait for the self-checks to complete and this to zero out. Then we push start on the computer and we wait for the FDAIs to complete the alignment. This is very important. If you don't wait for these, then you can end up into the wrong inclinated orbit. Don't know if that's a word. Ascent mode. Let me try to make the input controls we have mapped work. Should open a bug on that one. All right, we are ready to launch. So in the ascent checklist, it's really just monitor things. And then there's the separation here and zero out the IVIs. I'll do those and then we'll run the uh, insertion checklist. Once we get into orbit. So we're monitoring first stage fuel here. Make sure we roll and start pitching. Uh, I like to turn on at least those. And then we just sit back and enjoy the ride, really. I use my keypad for the entry on this. Um, so I have the period key mapped to readout, so I can just hit that. And then delete key is clear. Turn up the lights. Another thing I found you can do is you can turn on the attitude indicator lights and then the ball lights up. We're going to be doing a rendezvous, so I'll go ahead and set this to 25. We need to remember to turn on our encoder and stuff once we're ready to start using it. And also your radar has to be on uh, for the encoder to work. OK, 
Okay, it should be pretty close to first stage completion. Then the ride should get smoother. Staging, G Force has dropped, it ignited again, G Forces go start going back up. And then we're watching our second stage fuel. Another thing you can do is you can monitor the map orbital information and you can watch and make sure your inclination is getting close to your target inclination here when you do your final insertion. And if you're way out of inclination, there's really no point in continuing. You'll want to just start over because something's gone wrong. Right now it's a little high and getting larger, but it should go back to 28.9 here, or pretty close to it, uh, by the time we do our insertion, final insertion. It's counting back down now. I guess that's why we're a little bit on this side of the uh, zero point in yaw. Let's to lower this back down. You can see we're starting to point a little bit down. Generally that would be to prevent your apoapsis from going up higher and higher. We can see the apoapsis is actually getting a little bit lower, but pretty steady. So it's trying to hold it around that point, I do believe. I wonder if these G's are historically accurate, because that's pretty high. Like 10 G's just from the booster. I'll need to go look that up. All right, we're just about there. This starts going pretty fast at the end. And should be cut off, great. All right, post insertion checklist. This doesn't light up the switch, but it's here. Just to check all the lights if you wanted to do that. Attitude indicator lights, circuit breaker as required. We already did that. We turned up those cinder lights. Uh, okay. I'm going to leave that on. Turn our batteries off. Totally on fuel cells now. We didn't uh, zero out our IVIs here. I 
Let's see, ohms are on. What am I missing? Okay, we'll come back to that. It says our ohm should be on, right? But I have no control right now. Or I do, and it's not showing up on these. Nope, it is not working. shouldn't really they were very small values so it shouldn't really matter but we need to figure out why our ohms are not working so we'll go ahead and speed up time here until this goes out okay. So now the catch-up program is loaded, and we want to circularize at periapsis. If you circularize at apoapsis, it's going to take a long time before you catch up in your orbit to the Agena, because you're pretty far behind it here. So, like, that's us, and that's Agena. If we were closer, we'd want to circularize at apoapsis, and then... Uh, do the rendezvous from there, but we're pretty far behind, so. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Let's see if it can be happy to, say, blunt in forward. It does not appear to be able to oh that's why I forgot to do that and I think we probably need some of these on there we go I'm not sure. I'm terrible at reading this thing. Why did it just change so much?
Long way from the booster. Well, let's see what we got loaded up. We never got our burn, did we? Five is negative eight three six. Now, uh, I mean, you can check you you can check uh, twenty six and twenty seven as well, but those are zero. Uh, for eighty four to work, you need to start the computer, and then you can read out your time until burn, which is forty seven minutes here. So let's see if we can get this guy on. Is up. enough. I just use this more because we're going to time lapse. Um, but before we time lapse, I need to figure out how to get this thing working. Our scanner is not on. It's a little weird. Okay. It's good enough to get started with. We will go. Okay, so now it's time lapse. Give myself a couple minutes. You don't have to be heads up or anything to do the burn. It's mostly going to be in the forward direction, and it'll automatically calculate the other ones. I just kind of prefer to be 
That looks pretty good. has gone off so when it comes back on it'll be time to execute the burn And again, I, I didn't set this to the exact second, so I'm going to go more by the uh, computer light than the timer, but it'll get us in the, within a few seconds. And the other thing you can do is also watch your map. So what we should be doing is lowering our apoapsis down to about the same value as our periapsis. And in my experience, the computed burns here are probably good enough, but not quite uh, in some cases. Okay, so computer light has come on. So now we just zero out the IVIs, but then manually check. So we're 0.8 nautical miles out of circular. So can we tweak that a little bit? Okay, that's 0.3, so that's a little bit better. With just some little adjustments. Generally, either burn up or down and uh, fore or aft. Uh, if you need to adjust your inclination, which we'll do later, we're, we're close enough right now, so not too worried about that. Uh, and it'll have us do some inclination adjustment on the next burn. So we'll just leave that for now. All right, so when you're done with your burn, you hit reset. You can make sure you've acknowledged your uplink here. We can clear. And now we are in a circular orbit and we want to rendezvous with the Gina, so we request our rendezvous burn. And that's usually several hours ahead because we're so far away. So, and indeed, it's about seven hours out. So we want to get to about Let's say eight hours mission elapsed time here. Um, that'll give us time to get, get everything set up. So I will start. Uh, I'll usually go like turn that off so it won't constantly flip us around. But uh, okay, and then let's time scale. You can see your uh, this is oxygen pressure going up and down as the heaters automatically come on and off. So again, we want to get to about eight hours. Okay, here we come. Okay, so knowledge. Just double check our time. 
And then 84 is going to be the time to the burn once we start the computer. So start the computer. It will calculate. And we're 23 minutes out. So we want to get um, probably should have gone up. Terrible at this. So we're down into twenty twos now. Counting down, so 2150s, 2150, good, okay. All right, now we want to go sharpen forward for the next burn, and it's not going to be for 21 minutes. Let's go ahead and so we're going to be upside down for this burn, and that's fine. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. And now I'm going to time scale. Make sure we are sharpened forward. Make sure ohms are on. Because, yeah, technically you should turn ohms off and on, but I've just left them on. Okay. So just a couple minutes to go. I'm going to go ahead and time scale a little bit. Computer light should be on. We're going to burn four. Now what we want is we want to see our apogee or apoapsis come up to here. 106.9-ish. Right, you can see it has you a little short. So let's get it just up to 106.9, and then we'll zero out the other ones. Okay. So if our apogee is going to be, oh, did you see it just change? It just randomly changed for no apparent reason. So watch out for that, I guess. But if, if our apogee is at 106.8 and theirs is at 106.9, they should be above us at the point where we rendezvous. 
All right, we are done with our burn, so reset. We can put our radar on standby. Just so we don't forget it later, let's go ahead and turn our encoder on. So now the next burn is going to circularize us at our apogee, 106.8, and bring us in the same orbit uh, as the Agena. So we want to do a circ at AP request. That will get us an uplink. And now we can double check it. 909. Two five five nine and one three six point two. That looks good. And ready for our eighty four. Start the computer. Now we can read out our time. So we're looking at like forty one, maybe forty one. Let's see. Okay, now we are ready to time scale. This again will be a sharp and forward burn. You can see we've used very little of our ohms fuel here. And one way to conserve that fuel is to use direct if you're going to roll. Because then you just give it a little uh, roll here and it just keeps rolling. If you have an rate command, it kind of has to burn every time you push and let off on the key. Like this is rate command yaw. It's kind of nice because it zeroes it out for you, but it, uh, it does use more fuel. Okay, sharpen forward. We'll go back to the platform. a minute to the burn. Okay, one minute. So our timer is pretty close. Because we are coming up on the Agena, we're about one minute from it, we can put our radar on and we'll be able to see our distance. Right? 
So we're still a little over 10,000 feet out, 11 or 12 maybe. Um, and our closure rate is quite high right now. That's expected because we're coming up out of a lower orbit. Uh, our closure rate should lower as we get closer, but we're going to need to execute this burn uh, to synchronize our orbits up. And we should be about two or three thousand feet out at the point where we do our burn. If you want to get a little closer, I think you can delay the burn a little bit. Um, like it won't take very long to burn, so you could wait till you get to 2,000 or, or so feet away here. You got to remember your vertical distance is going to be some of that, so you you don't want to wait too long because then you'll pass it. Now this already came back on. Oh, because we did pass it. Okay, let's uh, let's do that. Now at this point, our inclination should be pretty close on, right? We can tweak it a little bit if we want, but the thing to do next is turn on your radar, right? Um, then we're going to want to put this into rendezvous mode for the last phase, but this has this has to wait 10 minutes to load this program. But we can still use our radar to point at the Agena. And the other thing we can do, make sure our coder is on, and transmit a one here to turn on the blinky light, and then we should be able to see Agena back there. So we did we did pass it, right? So we're now in front of it, and it is above us as we kind of expected, right? So what we're going to do is burn retrograde a bit here, kind of coast back towards it, and we can burn up a little bit to close that vertical distance too. Now the other thing we can do, since we've got our radar on, and this shows the Agena is currently above us and it is now drifting, or well, we're drifting up towards it, I guess. I mean, we're both drifting, but the relative motion is closure of that vertical distance. Now the other thing is, since it's behind us, we could flip around and point at it, but let's get, I think we need to be on the other side of it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember if we should be in front or behind it. I guess let's uh, let's go ahead and flip around. We'll go blunt in forwards for now. And you can see that vertical distance here is still closing. And since we're going, you can think of it as we're going up towards it. Now we want to start going down to meet it. We had burned up. So now we're going to burn down just to kind of stop that from going too fast below us here. And once we're blunt in forward here, we'll know our horizontal offset as well. So what we want to do is get th these crosses to line up with us, right? So I'm going to burn to the right a little bit, which is going to cause that vertical needle to drift towards us and then start burning left a little bit to stop it from going that direction. And I'm going to burn up a little bit more to close that vertical distance. And we should be able to look in the window now and start seeing it. There we go. So now we can start using our visual cues as well, but it's still a good idea to keep these in mind, right? I'm burning down because it's drifted well below us. I'm burning four to close that distance to it a little faster. And watch your rate needle here. You don't want it to be super high relative to your distance. We're a thousand feet off now. And a good rule of thumb, uh, let's turn off this. Uh, why don't I put this in rate?
There we go. Let that get a little out of hand. Um, yeah, watch your closer rate as you start getting closer to it, or you'll fly past it. Now I'm just doing little ohms burns, little taps. Try and get it kind of steady here. Okay, because we want to turn off the blinky light off. And then do a 141. And we should see the docking light come on. And we apparently missed the 250. So let's try that again. 250 there we go that's annoying so one thing you can do is hang out here till this finishes loading again 10 minutes from when we started um, or you can just line up pretty well and dock right if you're lined up uh, with your orbit uh, should should be pretty good to dock okay let's turn on our index here Just kind of guessing at our alignment here a little bit. Once the rendezvous program finishes loading, these will read out your alignment. Just little short bursts. Still not loaded. It's not uncommon for that rendezvous to take 10 minutes, but we were pretty close, so. And if we just keep drifting here the way we're drifting, we're, we're just gonna dock. Kinda hoping to wait. so I can show that final stage here. I'm gonna time lapse. Hmm. 
still not loaded. Is there any way we can see both? Okay, I did a couple little bursts away from it so we can wait for this thing to load. There we go. So now we can start the computer and we get our alignment here. As far as I know, that's only your attitude alignment, not your translational alignment. So you still have to do that, as far as I know, visually. Okay, here we go. see the lights here went from dock to rigid once we connected I don't know why it does that offset sliding thing but it does and that's a docking remember to leave your radar on if you're going to issue any more commands to it it's one thing you can do is turn 140 off to turn off those lights uh, that were inside the, the docking lights. Um, 